Hey everyone, Sergey here, and in this video I'm going to try something different. I'm going to answer some questions that you guys often ask, and as many of you know, I teach expressions, which is the coding side of After Effects, and like many of you, you know, I'm a motion designer first, so I didn't learn expressions until later on in my career, and so I get it, you know, there's a disconnect between the creative and the coding side of uh, After Effects, and it's kind of hard for creative sometimes to understand expressions, so I'm going to try to answer some questions a lot of you might have. And uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about square brackets. It's basically this. In the coding world, we have a fancy word for it called array. And again, essentially, it's just a cute way of saying it's a list. So basically, you can say it's a list. That's all that is. So when you think of an array, you're, you're thinking of a list that has items. Now, those items don't have a specific name. Those items are listed basically based on the index value, like where it's at in the list. So think of it as a list. In fact, it kind of looks like a list. You have a square bracket, right? It opens up like that. It kind of looks like a list, like a paper. And then we have items. Now, the items start with zero, index value zero and not one. So that's important to know. So it starts with zero. So that's the first item. Then second item would be one. And third would be two and so on. So you would do that for however many items you have. So again, an array is a list, it has items, and they're listed based on the index value, where it's at in the list, and not a name. That's something else. Okay, so that's what it is in After Effects. Now, to access a specific item in the list, you would just say, hey, list, I want to access a, let's say maybe this one right here. That's item number 012, right? Even though it's a third one, but it's really item 2. Okay, so then I would use square brackets to call up that item. So inside the square brackets, right next to my list, I would say, hey, I want this one right here. So that's going to be 0, 1, 2. So I would type 2, and then this list would return this in here. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want something else, maybe you want, uh, let's do this. Maybe we want the, the first one. I would just type 0, and then it would be basically it call it up and return that for us there so again it's a list it has items and to access those items we use square brackets to call out the index value of the item we want now obviously it gets more complex with that because uh, an array can be anything like the items inside the array can be numbers they can be booleans like a uh, true or false they can be um, another array, like another list. It can be a, a text. But in this video, I'm just going to focus on numbers, not to confuse you guys. But it's the same concept for all of them. So, all right, well, let's let's create like a, a list. So in the coding world, again, we would create uh, a variable called list, right? And then we would tell it to be a list. So we would use square brackets. We would open it up and then we'd list stuff like maybe 900 maybe 600, uh, let's do one more, like 500, you get the gist. And then we would close it, so we have a finished list. Now each line gets a um, um, colon, semicolon, the word just slipped out of me. So uh, yeah, that's how we end each line, that's basically like a period in the coding world. Basically we say, alright, we're done with this line, let's go to the next one. So we created a list, it has three items, and remember, the way they are labeled, they start on the left side, they go to the right side, and it starts with 0, 1, 2. Okay, so we're creating a list, picture a list. And so if I wanted to call up, let's say the 600, I would just say list, and then I would use square brackets. And so 0, 1, it's item 1. Remember, that's 1, 0, 1. Okay, and so that would return essentially 600 for me. Okay, that's really all, that's all that is. Remember, list, you can access it, square brackets, that's how you access what do you want, and then it will give you what you want. Uh, I'm sure I'm over uh, explaining here, but I really want you to get this because here's how this relates to After Effects. So we have position. It has a value that is a list. Basically, it's an array. Now watch this. It would make more sense if you put square brackets around it like this. It's basically a list. Now the first item is 0, the second item is 1. So, and again, comma separates the two. <laughs> That's how it relates to it. And so if I am, let me make it more practical for you. Hold on, let me do this. So if I am in the source text here, 
and I'm going to alt click on a stopwatch to create an expression. And in here, I want to call up the position. So I'm just going to say position, which is think of it like a variable almost, right? It's, 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 it's a position, it's a property, and I want the value of it. So I'm going to say period value. So I'm saying position, give me your value. So just like that, it will give me a list. It has two items. Okay, I hope you're following me. So this is just a path to this value. So think of it like an address to this value. Where is it located? Now, this can get confusing because I can point to this value so many different ways. I can say position, but then I can also say, uh, is it transform? Make sure, there you go. It will give me that. Then I can say other ways. I can say this comp period layer, uh, which layer is it in? Uh, text, yeah, there you go, that one. And then period transform. And uh, anyway, you can write an address number of different ways and it will still give you the same value. But for this example, I'm gonna keep it short. I'm just gonna do it like this. So again, it's just English that gives us a number. So it gives us a list. Now it gives me two values, but what if I only want the second one? How would I do it? Now remember the square brackets. So I would just do square brackets. And inside here, I would call up which item do I want? Do I want the first one, which is zero, or the second one? So in this case, I want the second one, and I'm going to say one. Remember, zero, one. So when I click away, it gives me the second one. That's it. <laughs> That's really that simple. And essentially, it's a bunch of English that gives me a value. That's what expressions are. Now, let me make it more um, practical. So we have this two, um, or like a position has two values, right? It's an uh, array of two items. So when you write a code, I'm going to alt click on a stopwatch. I can't just say 500 because it'd be like, hey, what the heck? It's like putting one battery in a remote that takes two batteries. It's going to say like, no, dude, this, the outcome of it has to be two dimensional. It's a two dimensional list. So you have to type two values. So you can't just type, let's say 600 like this comma 600. Well, remember you have to tell it that it's an object, it's an array, right? So you have to put it in square brackets. And so now first one will be applied to the first one, second one is gonna be applied to the second one. And just like that, that's exactly what we get. So a lot of times you see this, you, you, you see people do like a variable, they say X, you're gonna be 500. You remember it's a period, semicolon. And then Y, you're gonna be, let's do 600 and then at the end of it, we have to marry it together so that it speaks the same language. So then we're going to say X, Y. Essentially, we created a list here, right? A list. The first item is X, which is 500, which is attached a number to a value or to a variable. And then Y is 600. And so X goes into the first, Y goes into second. You get the gist. Now, Obviously, we can build up on that. We can go to the effect controls here. We can bring in a slider right here. And we can call this one, let's do X. We can duplicate this one, Control D. We can call it Y. And maybe this one can be like 960. And this one can be 540. And then instead of having a number in our code, we can just attach it to the slider. So that's slider one, that's slider two. And just to be clear, I want the value. I mean, you can leave it as is, but I like to specify things. I want the value of that slider. And so the same thing here. And there you go. And so now we can control position from any of those sliders. So again, I just want to show you the practical side of things. Now you know what an array is, how to access it. How does that make sense in the coding world? And once you do know the basics, all of a sudden, all those fears uh, kind of go away and it makes things more practical and now you see that hey code is very useful now I can do more things with it but trust me I'm just scratching the surface with this you can use this for all kinds of things like the drop down menu is another thing they can use arrays for and uh, yeah it definitely opens you up to more things to explore so thank you for watching thank you for uh, you know spending your precious time with me and let me know if you have any questions any subjects you want me to tackle and I'll do the same thing here uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you're not a part of our mentoring group on Facebook, I highly recommend that you join. We have a lot of very knowledgeable people, especially on expressions. They're all in there rubbing shoulders with everybody. And uh, it's a fun group of people. Just in general, we call it a family because everyone's just there to help you. They're either there to get helped or to help somebody else. So definitely join. Go to ukrami.com community. 
I'll be sure to include the link at the bottom of this video. But until next time, my name is Sergey Praknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.